What's going on, folks? I'm Femi the Agent. I'm Femi the Realtor. And here we are on another episode of Sneakers and Real Estate. Two of our favorite things to talk about. You guys know we both love sneakers. We collect them. We wear them. The ones we buy that we don't wear, we end up selling. Very rare, but we end up getting rid of them, uh, you know. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the Jordan 1 Royal Reimagined. Um, really dope shoe. Uh, I think a lot of people are sleeping on these right now because they didn't sell out in one day. Oh my God. Um, but suede sneaker, really dope, uh, material, dope execution, um, by brand Jordan, in my opinion. Um, I actually have these in the, um, um, I can't remember the name of them right now, but I have another pair of Royals, um, the fly knits. Uh, that are really really comfortable um, But this is a pay I think you need um, you guys know I love to travel I love to be you know out of the country So this is definitely a pair you guys will see Probably in the springtime in foreign soil um, as you can see they haven't been laced up. So they are still dead stock um, These will be back out so anybody if you're looking to get your hands on a pair of Royals I would definitely suggest you do it now before they do get sold out because right now they are still being slept on so um, dope shoe, dope uh, colorway, and like I said, if you could grab, grab a pair, I would definitely suggest you do. Um, my son will be talking about some real estate right now. I'll give you an idea of what's going on in the market. So right now, real estate rates have came down, you know, a good amount um, from what everybody has been seeing, the 7% to 75 Right now, a 30-year fixed is a little bit over 6%, like 6.125 um for a 15 year it's right over five and a half so around like 5.7 so still a great time to buy still a great time to sell um you know if you're looking to invest as well um regardless of the market opportunities are going to present themselves you know it's about your carrying costs your overhead you know if the numbers make sense you know regardless of the market it's uh it'll make sense but in terms of selling and, and buying, you know, it's a uh, it's a great time before the spring comes and, you know, the summer changes and, um, you know, more people get out there. You know, you want to try to hone in and focus while not too much of the pressure is on real estate as of right now. More people are focused about the holidays and Absolutely. things of that nature. So, yeah. you know, you'll have a better opportunity or a better shot at, you know, bidding on something because not as many people's focus is on purchasing a home right now. It's on, you know, the holiday time, spending time with their family. Or if you're thinking about selling, now is still a great time, you know, despite what everybody might be saying, you know, I want to wait till the spring or the summer when more buyers come in the market and things of that nature. More competition. Exactly. There's going to be more inventory, more competition because, you know, the school year will be coming to an end. People, you know, their kids will be graduating from high school, college. They'll be retiring from jobs, all, all different sort of scenarios. And, you know, they'll be looking to put their houses on the market, move out of state, relocate, you know upsize downsize all different things of that nature so you definitely want to speak to one of us um experts on um you know a position that will definitely put you in the greatest light um to be the most efficient and if that's buying selling or investing so um yeah now great. like my son said is it is a great time you know less competition and one of the banks that we also work with they're offering a uh, 30-year program 30-year mortgage right now for Five and a half percent, five point six two five, I think it is. So, yeah, they have fantastic yeah. rates right now. Um, so we can definitely get you into something. So you know, if you are looking to buy right now, definitely give either myself or my son a call. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on the uh, on the, the real estate, but just know that now is a great time. There's always opportunities out there for whatever you're looking to do, buying, selling, upgrading, downgrading. You know, if you've been in the house for you know five to ten years, you already have you know a decent amount of equity built in anyway. So. It really doesn't make sense to wait. Um, you know, we can always make up the difference on whatever the purchase is or whatever you're looking to do. Always know that you have leverage there and you have somebody that's been in real estate business for uh, 21 years. So I have a lot of experience with that and I can definitely help you. Um, so we have uh, an esteemed guest here, somebody that uh, I hold in a very high regard, someone that I have a lot of respect for, someone that I've been, um, you know, we've been speaking off the uh, off the air because I needed to get to get him to uh, you know sit down and talk with us because um, he's uh, very no nonsense. If you guys uh, follow him, and if you're not following him, then you're living under a rock and you're missing something. Thank this you. is my guy Shazad from uh, Pinnacle Real Estate. 
Thank What's you for on, having sir? me. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, guys. That was a fantastic intro, guys. It's going to be hard to top that. Thank you, man. I appreciate uh, that. And I agree with everything you said. Uh, my name is Shazad Qureshi with Pinnacle Real Estate. Uh, Instagram, YouTube, all the same handle. Um, and just to elaborate on what you were saying before, um, I just listed a house today, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't look at this metric only, but within the, I listed at seven o'clock this morning before I went over to the gym. Seven o'clock. Yeah. And it was a coming soon because I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to list a house going into the going New Year's to, weekend. Right. But I want people to be sitting at home. Well, they get an idea of what's coming. That, right. So I put all the pictures up in one shot, floor plan, everything. I had 20 saves and over 300 views in an hour or two. Really? Yes. And it's, wow. a, it's an $800,000 split level in Farmingdale, right? So, you know, while sellers might be saying, I don't want to list my house for the spring, I agree with you 100%. There's still no inventory. Yeah, Most inventory. of the towns I work in, there's 15 or 20 houses for sale. Yeah. Right. Used to be 100, 75, 80. 80, give or take. You know, yeah. 20 houses. You know two or three already pending or right. the deals are kind of being oh, put kind together. Of, put together. Right? So... I put it out there, January 2nd, that phone's gonna, it's gonna go crazy. Well, You're they're gonna, gonna start people, calling, they'll start calling you uh, now. Please, can I, I get, get to get early? in, this is the and, house. And, and, then, and then you say, you, you have to be firm at that point and create that pent up demand mm -hmm. and do that first open house, those first two open houses, maybe a twilight open house and then a weekend open house right. and get people excited mm -hmm. about making an offer. Well, it's funny you know? that you say that because there's a property that um, I actually just finished working on, something that I bought to rehab in St. Albans, and I put it on the market um, a month ago. Wow. Did an open house on Sunday. We had, I think, 65 people at the open house. That's unbelievable. And this is a house that's listed, like you said. This is a 749 house. I ended up getting 40,000 above ask, and we got 15 offers. Through the holidays. Through the holidays. There you go. That's how you know where the market is at. It, it gives you an idea where the market is. It gives you an idea if you have a good product, if you sure. have something that stands out. It stands out. Sure. And I feel that I have that too in Farming there, where do. it's a gut renovated house. Right. And, you know, I think that something that's turnkey right now, and especially, like you said, with the rates having fallen, yeah. right. there's a big difference between seven and a half and closer to six. It's true. Big, big, difference, big difference. You know, yeah. you're financing six, seven hundred thousand at fifteen hundred, you know, it's at seven percent. You know, an extra hundred fifty thousand, extra thousand bucks a month. Yeah, a extra lot. thousand. That Anywhere covers that your looking. property taxes yeah. potentially. It does, right? So it does. that's a huge swing. It makes a big difference. And it's gonna it's gonna crush the people that have been waiting on the sidelines. Yeah, it is. I As mean, opposed to refinancing. Yeah. You know, and uh, and not everybody could afford the seven and a half percent rate, but now right. that we're back in the in where six, six is, is reasonable again. Right. <laughs> when you were almost at eight, six feels like a gift. It feels like a gift. Right. So I agree. I think it's gonna be a wild a wild winter, and it's gonna lead into a very uh, interesting spring, yeah, yeah. yeah nice. for sure. Um, for, sure. for those who don't who don't know you, who've been living under a rock, I don't know why. We're not even going to touch on that right now. Um, how long um, have you been in the business? What's your family background? So um, I got into the business full time. Uh, I graduated college at probably one of the worst times in modern history during the recession. You um, did? Wow. Okay. Yeah, and that's when um, basically lawyers working as paralegals, right. people were getting let go from investment banking to mergers and acquisitions attorneys, right. uh, anything that was like a high-end white collar uh, field, they were people go. were hurting. Yeah. Um, and I personally uh, was about to go to law school and it was a very tough market and it just didn't feel right for my personality. Right. I, I'm a little bit of a troublemaker, <laughs> highly unemployable, uh, basically been fired from every job I ever had. Okay. So I, I decided that um, I was gonna go into real estate. My father had tried it a couple of years before the recession. Obviously, that was a very tough time that to get into time. the business. Yeah. Um, and so together, we built a couple houses uh, coming out of the recession, 11, 10, 11, 12, more, more like 11, 12, 13. Nice. But um, the first project I got my, my feet wet in was a short sale. Oh, wow, Back okay. Back when nobody knew what a short what, sale what was. Short sale it was, was 2011. You were and buying the short sale or you were selling? I was selling? buying a short sale, okay. and it was before short sales were organized. Right. They were 15 months, 18 months, you know, holding time. I contract. used to call them long sale because yeah, I did yeah. them myself. There was nothing short about them. <laughs> Absolutely right? nothing. You know? Absolutely and, nothing. And, 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 and even then, twice the deal died while we were in contract because the bank didn't accept their offer. There right. was a second uh, lien holder. Lien holder. Okay, so that, that'll, that'll throw a wrench that, in the operation every single time. Every time. Right. So these are things I learned as a kid. And my father had never done this before. I had never done this before. But we're just like, we don't really have a choice. What's and, the worst that could happen? Right, right. We lose a little bit of money and we learn. Right. But we actually made a good amount of money on that. Good. Um, and then I did a couple of flips. 
Uh, that was a bigger project. That was an extension, a dormer, a renovation. Oh, the short With sale? a variance. Yeah, yeah, with a variance. Wow. So not only did we have to wait for the, the short sale to get approved, now you but also then have we to had wait to for file the for a variance. How long did that take? For those who don't know what a variance is, yeah. if you so, can explain So a variance that. is when you exceed the local zoning code, right? So okay. that means that something that you're asking for is above and beyond what they'll allow the you norm. to build. Right. Okay. Uh, it could be that you're switching a residential property to commercial. Okay. It could be something as simple as you're encroaching too far in the side yard next to your neighbor. Right. It could be that you're building a house a little bit bigger than what's allowed. Right. Um, it goes by gross floor area, floor area ratio. You, so you draw up a set of plans, and generally speaking, in Long Island, the first place those plans goes is to the zoning. Zoning. And zoning will look at those plans and say, this exceeds what we're allowed to build. So you have two choices. Amend the plan or do something that, uh, which is highly unlikely to get approved if you're an investor, mm -hmm. especially if it's like, hey, I just want to build a bigger house and make more money. Right. That's not something that's approved very often. Right. So um, that variance it allows you to, uh, if you're a homeowner or potentially an investor, to build more than you're allowed to. And, okay. and, and you have to get your rejection, then, then go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. To appeal it. Okay. Yes. And then uh, you sit in front of a, a committee, basically, that's the Zoning Board. Right. And you have to explain to them why... It's, they should. They should get why you should be granted this variance. Mm -hmm. Generally, people will hire an attorney or bring their architect. Right. Um, and for the most part, if you're not being uh, greedy, right. they'll give it to you okay. if it's reasonable. Within reason. Within okay. reason. You can't uh, exceed the zoning code by 500 square feet and think they're just going to give it to you every time. Right. Um, a, a little ask is better than a big ask, Got like it. anything in life. Um, so if the if the board approves it. You get it, and then you have to get the plans approved, get 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 your permit, and you can start building. It typically adds about six to eight months. Six to eight months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so with, I guess, those properties, so I guess the property that you were doing back then, if it was going to take you six to eight months, did you factor that into everything that you guys were doing as far as what your bottom line was or what you were looking to do at that time? So I, I always, uh, I've always stayed away from hard money. It's something that I, you know, strongly just advise novice investors to stay away from. Um, but you, for it, religious reasons, you stay away from th it. Th that, that is definitely the major component of it. Okay. Um, but, it, you know, when you buy something cash, even if you can do less projects, um, it gives you a little bit more flexibility in that's terms true. of time, yeah, you know, true. because with the hard money guys, that clock is ticking yeah. every you're month. You're paying the interest every month. Whether you're paying it every month or you're paying it lump sum at so, the end, yeah. you're, you're going to pay, you know. So um, I've done it so many times, so I'm, you know. A, you know. You know, it was factored in. Back then, it was much cheaper to build, man. Right. The job that I did at that house for 200, uh, 150000 200000 would cost me at least double that now. At least? At least. Wow. Yeah. I can't touch a dormer for less than, you know, $200,000 anymore. I remember yeah. the house that we were living in, that we have been in for 18 years, uh, a ranch. Um, I remember looking into a dormer, I'd say maybe two or three years in, so that we bought the house in 2005, and I think at that point the dormer was 150. Yeah, and that was at the peak of that market. Yeah. You know, so that wasn't cheap. Yeah. But even by today's standards, that's cheap, you know? And I'm assuming that was the dorm of the whole house, over the top yeah. of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah to go over yeah. the whole, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, g generally, rule of thumb is you can't add square footage for less than two to $300 a square foot. And anybody says that you can, it's just They're just pulling you, right. you know? Right. Um, and remember, adding a dormer is not just adding a second so, floor. you got to open up that first floor. It's right. structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, right. Right. you know? And everyone's like, oh, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to save this, or I'm going to try to save that. Once they sit down with the architect, there's nothing left. There's nothing to say. I want to knock this wall down. I want to move the kitchen. I want to bump this out. There's nothing left. It's, it's actually sometimes actually more time consuming. Really? Than to just start fresh. Start fresh. Yeah. yeah I've done a bunch of those like big Well, I, I've noticed that you've, yeah. you've, you, you, do a lot of, um, you do a lot of knockdowns. So for you, um, after doing that project that you did, the short sale that you bought, did you at that point... You stuck with flipping or you just um, went straight into building? Or how, how did you, what was the, the transition? So that was almost a new house. I did a couple of flips after that, um, but uh, not for any uh, nefarious reason or greedy reason. I, I thought that it's a good idea to sort of carve my own space out. Got it. Because, you know, sometimes it becomes complicated when you're working with family and you have other sure. siblings. Sure. I'm the oldest. I didn't uh, want to be okay. the one that like sort of like, hijacked the family, the family business right. we were learning we were all learning you right. know we're, we're not my father was an accountant growing up he took the train every i was going to ask you that where, yeah. where that where yeah. the building or yeah. where that yeah. came from well he got laid off when i was in high school wow and that's where it started and he wasn't in public accounting anymore so you had to either find another very niche job that right. he was in or 
retool yourself. Well, for him, I'm sure at that point, that's all he knew. Right, and he was in his 50s. So at that point, it's very hard, man. Especially technology was changing so fast back then. Right. You know, Um, so I went off on my own, and my first investor was a guy that I knew from the gym, and I sold him off my iPad. Wow. Off the first two projects. Nice. And I was like, listen, let's try to do something together. And I was 25, 24. Yeah, right around there. Wow. So very hard. And I'm 36 now. So imagine what I look I like. I could imagine what you look, I look like back like, then. Like yeah. a baby. And so. Was know, it we, hard for you to sell them? But, but I think for you, you having those two projects to show. Yeah. You had a track record. Yeah, yeah. So I showed him those two projects. Um, I fixed his house after Irene, which is the one before Sandy. The one before Sandy. Yeah. I fixed his house. He had two feet of water, Irene. Then we started working together from that relationship. Nice. Then he got six feet of water during Sandy. So then I helped him sell the house after that. Um, but, uh, you know, you help someone in their time of need. And he was a lawyer. I was signing deals that I would never sign today. Like <laughs> unsecured, name not on the deed. Really? Putting up renovation money without any real formal anything. Right. But you got to do what you got to do in learning. the beginning. You were learning, like you said. And we always made a little money. Right. You know? But I realized early on that those flips were way too tight. One of the flips I did with him, we made almost no money. So I was like, listen, wow. I just want to, if I can get 10 Gs for my three months of time, for your time. I'm okay. Right. Because that was enough to at least keep my rent paid okay. at the house I was living in. I was living in a rental with my wife. Right. We had a roommate upstairs. Rent was three Gs a month. Right. I figured three months rent. I'm good. We okay. We got, at least we broke but, even. But at least, like you said, for I'm, your time. So I don't feel like... That person still hits me up today. Really? Yes, sir. They want to buy a new house. They don't want to buy a new house. It'll happen It'll eventually. Happen. Yeah. But uh, if you can still talk to the people that you started out with, you didn't do that bad of a job. But you know what it is? I think that has a lot to do with, you know, one of the reasons that I've been running and, and chasing you. I mean, you, uh, listen, you, I came on the first, I, I came on the first, uh, first try, man. I, yeah. I appreciate the invite. Though. No, I and, I, and I appreciate it too, because, you know, you and I, <laughs> we did something together, what, a year ago, right? I feel like it's been almost a almost, year, yeah, because yeah. it was mad cold then mad too, cold, right? Yeah. yeah. So we did that. We did that event and uh, with um, real estate and show. Shout real out to real estate, estate and show yeah. podcast. Shout out to guys, Kevin and man. James. And um, you know, I've been watching everything that you've been doing, and you know, you you're a popular person, but you know what's so funny about people who are very outspoken? You tend not to be the most popular person no, no, because no, you're never. outspoken. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, for, for me, sure. those are the type of people that I gravitate me towards too. because I'm I'm not. I don't look to We're try to fit in. We're not people pleasers. We're not people pleasers. No. I'm not looking to fit in with everybody. No. I'm looking to to be around like-minded people. I and, appreciate you know, it, when man. you see somebody that that's doing what they need to do. But going back to what you were saying just now, it says a lot about you and it says a lot about your integrity. It's the fact that you're still speaking with that person. How long yeah, ago was yeah. this? Uh, that flip particularly was about eight years ago, nine years ago, and I was making no money then. Wow. Like really no money yeah really struggling like wow. bills were getting paid right but nothing was getting stacked right you know what i mean because you were just was, you, were, you were scraping by you were well, getting by on the job education on the job training is how i kind of look at it right. you know i got sort of paid for what i would have had to pay someone any for and right. you know you got to pay for law school you got to pay for medical school you got to right. pay for that so right. i look at it like i almost got ahead by getting paid for that education right even if it was a little bit right you know but I think, you know, in, in real estate in itself, I mean, you think about some of the stuff that we're doing now, what we've been doing for the last five or 10 years, you yeah. know, you get into, you take the test, you pass, you, you pass the test, and then you're kind of just thrown out into the field. So 100%. everything is, for real estate, you know, some of the scenarios or situations that we come up against, there's, none of that was, was taught to you no, in no. school. Especially yeah. the construction side. Right. You learn sales right. when you take that course. Right. And I think that's the one thing that allowed me uh, I really struggled as a realtor, like big time, because yeah. I was young, number one, and number two, the track record, right? right? Um, so building homes was the only way that I was going to be able to... Sort of carve your own niche. Carve my own niche out, okay. yeah. And so now that construction background, and you guys do you know, your fair share of construction as right. well, there's not a situation that you're going to walk into that you guys aren't going to know what you're looking at. It's true. Like you could, you're not going to walk up to a house and say, oh, that roof is going to be 20 grand. Because you and I both know, it's all of us know, it's not a twenty thousand dollar roof. So you're roof. not going to let some tire kicker come and take advantage of your right. client, and vice right. versa. So right. I mean, that background is super important. Well, it pays dividends. I mean, it just sure. it, it, it it you know, like you said, when you when you're working on a project, you know, everything really is you know profit and loss, and you're trying to manage the money as best 100%. as possible. So while doing you know, the right thing, while doing the right thing, yeah, which is the most before. important thing. Yeah, doing, doing right by your clients, folks. Because when you got to, number one, it's expensive to go back. And then if you don't go back, you're dead anyway. You're dead anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, 
you know, you got you got your young man here learning the ropes the right way, and, yeah. and, and it's it's so important because um, that integrity and that track record, by the time you're 35, uh, I'm 37, by the time you're my age, you could look someone in the face and say, I've been doing this 15 years. Right. That's, That's true. People jump, like, people get shocked when they hear me say, like, look, I've been doing this full time almost 15 years. They're like, what, did you start when you were 12? And then I say, pull up, Zillow. And you, you can, can see how long I've been doing this. All the way back. Right. You can scroll back, you know. Um, so but, I have the track record to speak yeah, about. I know and, what I'm talking that's about. So it's going to be amazing for you, man. I mean, forget about it. You nice. know, you got a good teacher too. So. Thank you, man. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so your family background, where's the, where's the family from? Oh, where were you born? So I was born here, okay. uh, Queens, 1986. Oh, Queens. Nice. Yeah. Um, we, uh, I was 14. Like, all right. Put a, put, put <laughs> Maybe a day, I should. Yeah. Put a oh, no, I was 10. It. I was 10. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 19 really though? Uh, no. Oh, well, I was, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sorry. I was 12. Yeah. 12. Um, so you were born in Queens, yeah. yeah, yeah. For me, I'm uh, you know I'm born in Brooklyn, but my family's from Nigeria. Where's okay. your family from? So my grandparents from India. Okay. Uh, during the partition of India, when they kind of carved it up into three different countries, nice. my grandparents moved from the north of India to the south of Pakistan, Karachi. So my parents were born in Karachi. Okay. But originally, my family's from northern India. We speak Urdu. Um, which is very similar to Hindi. Right. The script is different, but the language is the language pretty is much the same. Yeah, so okay. that's why when you watch Bollywood or whatever, that's Hindi and Urdu is almost, almost interchangeable similar. at okay. that point. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then my father immigrated here early for that part of the world, 1972. Nice. He was in college. He was 19 years old. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, came here by himself with zero. 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 Like true zero. Uh, you know, applied to school. Didn't even tell his family until he was like, Basically really admitted in. to college and like, really? yeah, yeah. Because, you know, people, I learned one thing. I talk about the things that I've accomplished now, but when you're laying that foundation, you kind of just got to keep your head down and it's work. True. It's and true. I learned that from him that he, he, he got, when he was ready to get on that plane and, and getting ready to get, get, get out of the country, that's when he's like, all right, guys, this is what I'm doing. Right. Otherwise, but you know you what it is too. I, I think by the you get discouraged. You. <laughs> and they kind of try to find ways to sidetrack whatever you're looking to do or derail your dreams yeah. or whatever it may be. Because yeah. I think part of that is ignorant, but then also, well, the ignorant part of it because you don't know any better. Yeah, it's a crabs in the bucket uh, scenario. Right? People try to pull you down, you know. Yeah. So he did what he had to do. He came here. Then my mom came in the 80s. And I was originally supposed to actually be born in Miami. Really? Yeah, my dad was working down there for Arthur Anderson. Back then, they were one of the oh, big accounting firms. Nice. So he, you know, out of college, that was his first gig. Right. And then they moved to New York when he got a job, and that was the same job that he stayed at until he got until laid off. Until he got laid off in wow. two thousand one. Wow. Yeah. So that that's when I was in high school. I was angry. I was such a bad kid because you know we were a working family. Like right. my mom didn't really work, so um, you live in a nice town on one income and you grew up around a bunch of rich kids and you ride in a Huffy to work while they're zooming by an Audi S4s and yeah. BMWs. That'll mess with your head It'll a little bit. It'll mess with you, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and, and I worked the whole time. I worked, whatever the maximum you were allowed to work is what you did. before you would be considered full-time, full-time. employee, right? 33, 35 hours. They would always hover me right around 32, hover, 33 because right. 35 <laughs> and over, I believe, full-time. you're entitled to benefits yeah. at that point. Yeah, so I, well, they I, always I, they're always gonna cut it because they don't want. I want that. Yeah. But I wanted. I mean, listen, they were never gonna give me more. You, at sixteen, you can anyway. That's true. But um, always worked. You know, always was involved in extracurricular activities nice. as well, getting myself in all kinds of trouble. Okay. Um, but I used to get in a lot of trouble too when yeah, I was younger. Listen, I got man, kicked out of junior high school. I got kicked out of high school. There you go. But we're man. good people, folks. Yeah, man. Listen, that was our past dictates our future. That's right. We're both here. We're successful. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes. And, and thank God for that because I believe that uh, some of the kids that I grew up with never had uh, an ounce of adversity in their life. And right. I think it shows when push comes to shove. Definitely People does. People show that that real quick when things get funny. That's true. When, when it gets tough, get right? Funny. Yeah, for sure. For nice. sure. Nice. So how long, um, how long ago did you open your company? Because so I formed Pinnacle Real Estate Consulting in 2013. Okay. Um, so I'm 10 full plus years. It was March, actually. Uh, 10 Congrats. years. Congrats. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Congrats. But even then... Um, I did not, I was not able to pivot and sell a good amount of real estate until the last four or five years. Well, I always okay. did two or three deals a year of my own builds. Right. Then I did my one or two lucky, you know, you get those one, the or buy, two, my right. friend or my yeah, cousin, yeah. You know, right. not even cousin. It'd be a friend or a neighbor or somebody, right. but it was never like uh, something that was sustainable, you know. But that like, wasn't your focus back then either. I was, listen, it wasn't because I was so busy building houses and making no money. You know, wow. but I'm trying to make money. And but the goal was, listen, after I bought my house, I was telling you off camera, I went completely broke right. in 2014, like broke zero, zero, zero. negative 80,000. So wow. so I had to carve out of that, carve out of that hole, climb out of that hole 
while building houses for investors. It's very hard to do. Right. And I wasn't doing the hard money, right? As I mentioned, so right. it was, it was equity based partnerships. I was building two or three at a time. And if I made 30, 40, 50,000 on a house, I was happy, right. but I couldn't do that now. It's not 12 months commitment to make 40 grand. 40, it's, not, it's not worth it, yeah. you know? So, but I built 15, 20 houses like that with investors and I was able to, to, to keep my house yeah. and save up enough money to then after a certain number of years do either a whole project on my own oh, or a own. big chunk of it on my own oh, good. where okay. you get to keep a larger sum of the pie. Nice. Um, but real being a realtor was something that I was really trying to gain traction right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I had actually gotten a few my first few bigger listings right before the pandemic. Nice. And and YouTube actually despite the fact I have like 13,000 on Instagram mm -hmm. and I have about 4,000 on YouTube, mm -hmm. but YouTube is actually I would say changed my life. Yeah. Instagram totally changed my life. But YouTube allowed me to focus on long format video, right. meaning long format, meaning like 10 minutes as opposed to like 30, 30 seconds, seconds. Right? right? And I did it consistently for a year and a half without any breaks. And the, going into the pandemic, I had a very large catalog of videos already there. Mm -hmm. And then and remember at that time, we, we all sat virtual. home. We, we weren't doing anything. Bro, I had a $4 million listing in Old, Old Westbury. $4 million. Nice. You know, and I was sending the video out first before, before doing the in-person yeah. tours because right. everybody was locked down. Right. And that same builder gave me a $3 million listing in Laurel Hollow going into the pandemic. Nice. And the buyer signed the contract in March of 2020 right. when the market was tanking well, we and tanking. everything was going down. Right. Now, in retrospect, it was genius because that guy got a rate of like two and two, change two, right. and got a house that's worth at least a million dollars more right now. He paid two seven. It's worth at least, this guy's not hurting for cash anyway. At, at, no, right. no, no, no. Trust me. He was nice. a very well-known entrepreneur. Nice. And that's the cool thing about this business is that you get to meet some, some, some cool people. I've sold a house to a lottery winner. Oh, nice. They still don't know to this day that I know that they won a Powerball. <laughs> I kept it to myself. You kept it to yourself. Yeah. Right. But when they sent the proof of funds, I knew what time it was. Right. You know, like, <laughs> like I had to Google it after. You I Google got it, it. Do your, yo, right, do your research. Yo, I got a twenty six. I got to make sure this is real too. I got a twenty six million dollar proof of funds. Really? And I looked it up. It was a trust, obviously. And I looked it up, and the, new, the article popped right up, and right. I was like, okay. Okay. All right, we good. Okay. The, you know, and I'm sure you still keep very good contact with those. Yeah, people. we actually built them a house uh, nice. afterwards because they loved the, the work that we did, and the right. sister wanted to have a house built, so we built her a house. Nice. And they don't know; they have no idea that you know we, we who. Kept, the, it's no reason. There's no reason. My price didn't change. My partner, my, my partner's price didn't change. Nice. Just a fun fact. Right. That we know that the, the, they're. Good. I know who you. They're good forever. Ever, forever. Good forever. Nice. And they were such nice people, man. Nice. You know, I love working with nice people. But that's all. I think that's all that matters. You know, yeah. a lot of people don't understand that the longer that you're in this business, it's not so much about trying to work with everybody. No, no, no. I don't want to work with everybody. No, no. That's the beauty. And of I know getting that there. he doesn't either. No, no. But you had to in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And we took. Well, our, in the beginning, we, we had to take it. Yeah, yeah. We had abuse, to take the abuse. Disrespect. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, people are like, oh, I'll never let anybody disrespect me. Trust me, when you're an entrepreneur and you're carving out your niche, right. you're going to get some disrespect. Right. You're going to get overlooked. You're going to get ignored. You're going to get left on red. That's true. You're going to have to be persistent, consistent. Otherwise, you, you're if you don't, never have, if you don't let it roll to. off your shoulder, That's true. like, I'll take things personal in my personal life. Right. But in business, nah. Well, nah. those are not the people that matter anyway. Like, I got fired by a client because they got tired of, like, losing out on houses last and they, year. And they assumed that it's you, not knowing no, no, that the mom... No, they, 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 they lashed out at me a little bit, and the, the wife couldn't even tell me. The husband had to call me up and tell me, like, yo, it's, you know, I love you. I love the work that you do, but, like, but, we... Yeah. My wife just feels like you were just too real. Straight up. Mm -hmm. Too real. Yes, yes. Like, meaning, like, they, we want to see more houses, and I'm like, look... If it's not the right house, I don't want to just show you something like, for the oh, sake well, of. Oh, you were very dismissive about this one particular house. I was like, yeah, because he did a shitty job and the house isn't built yet. So, like, mm -hmm. let's wait till it's built. But I, going back to my point is that I still hit him up a few months later. I'd be like, hey, I'm building this house in this neighborhood that you were interested in. Right. Just come take a look. It's already sold, but come check it out. Get you see an the idea. type of work that I yeah, do. And this is... They've already seen a few houses. Right. I see, the, I see the husband still follows my Instagram stories. Nice. So I know, I, I know like eventually, they're, they're like eventually something will come of it. Right. Maybe, but I don't want to give people the wrong expectations. There's also those situations where you'll find out a year later, oh, I bought my house. With you know, can I, uh, you got a good electrician for me? You know what I mean? <laughs> that happens all the time. I laugh about it so much. You know what? Sometimes you even get overlooked on that first opportunity. Right. And if you keep, you already lost. That's true. So if you keep good energy, maybe it'll come back. Maybe it'll come second. back. Maybe when the mom goes to sell their house. You know what? I didn't give them that first shot, but 
Whatever. I need to. Yeah, yeah. I, I need to. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, but the track. But but the most important thing is laying that track record down, man. Nice. Like I sold thirty houses this year. I nice. sold twenty five last year. I sold seventeen the year before. You had a better yeah. year this year than yeah. last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know a lot of by agents that, that that didn't do half of that. Yeah, by volume, I, I did twenty five million last year. I did. I'm gonna close right around thirty one, thirty two million this nice. year, which is which is like that, that's great. You know, puts you in the top one percent yes, for sure. It definitely um, does. But then there's, I'm not getting excited because there's realtors that do a hundred million. Right. You know, so well, it, well I think teams, for you, you mostly, you you remain humble, but also knowing, like you said, that there's growth. There's still room yeah, for. Yeah. I wouldn't say improvement, but there's room for growth. Oh, for sure, and and and. and Honestly, like um, most of those realtors work for billion dollar agencies. Right. They have big marketing budgets. Right. They have a team of realtors that are working for free around the clock, door yeah. knocking and doing right. things. I don't have any of that. It's all organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, How and many people do you have that work with you? Uh, only my wife and I have one agent part time, but he doesn't even live here anymore. Live. But, really? he, but he's my really, really good friend. So I nice. hold his license and nice. he does a year or two deal a year or two. I'll help him out, right. you know. Right. Um, but my wife helps me out with like the open houses with, uh, you know, she, she she's sort of we grew almost like grew up together right. because we met when we were 21 right so like she knows a lot more than she thinks she knows right. you know what i mean like for you like yeah. you, you by the time you're my age you're gonna feel like you know everything you know everything so when i put her in a situation like a home inspection or like an appraisal right. she knows what to do nice i don't need to worry right you know and we can't always be there i'm a very we can't that's why freak. which is which is what i was asking i'm very i'm a very big control yeah, freak too yeah it's a big because i think for me it's I mean, everybody says it's, it's, I guess, a gift and a curse, but I it, think when you do something yourself, you know that someone else didn't have the opportunity to screw it up for you. And it was done right. And it was done right. And you might actually save a little time because if I have to correct something that somebody else did. Now it's taking away time from whatever yeah, else that I was yeah. doing. And listen, I don't need to be, uh, it's, so, yeah. like, it's so important to like set a reasonable expectation of right. like where you want to be. Everyone wants to scale, 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 be a billionaire. I'm trying to get out of the rat race, bro. Mm-hmm. I'll be straight with you, man. Like, right. like if I can sell 20, 30 houses a year and build one or two houses a year, You're good. I'm good, bro. Nice. I already own a couple properties. Like, I have no debt, thank God, you know? God. And, like, I keep it small. I work out of my home office. Nice. I don't have a big fancy office. Nice. I don't have, you know, I don't have... It's like unnecessary. So your ego is still contained. Uh, listen, I don't need. Listen, you got an office, and you got to put a, a full time office uh, manager there. Now you got then, overhead. Then you got then you got rent on that office unless you own the dirt. Listen, if I own a building and I have a vacant space that I can make a nice storefront, right? Sure. So be it. But it's not that hasn't happened, and I, I, I could sell fifty houses next year, and to this day, not one person has ever said to me. Like, Where's your office? Let or, me go to your office. Or or before I hire you, <laughs> let's see your office. Right. Here's a YouTube, here's the Instagram, here's a Newsday article, okay? Here's the Zillow link with all the recent sales. Right. Because you can't lie on Zillow. You cannot. It's all there. Everything's there. All these million dollar producers with zero <laughs> listings and zero recent sales. Right. And and then you could actually, the beauty of, of well, Zillow. Well, that's the smoke, the smoke and mirrors of, of social media, right? hundred percent. And they, they're dead now. They're gone. Right. Yeah. Most of them are back to whatever hustle they were doing before. Right. Uh, but but you, the cool no thing more dancing about, realtors. I think you no, were talking about that. I hate the dancing realtors. <laughs> you know, every once in a while I'll do like a trending reel, but I'll never. You'll you won't catch me dancing. I'm not dancing acting. I'm nah, sorry. I'm not doing. Nah, it. Nah. I, my wife can't even get me to dance at a wedding, bro. I, it's not my much style. less. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing. A much more. I'm a much more reserved guy than social media lets on. I I never thought I'd be in front of a camera in my life, bro. Right. You know, that was, that wasn't a goal. Right. You know, I think you know for me too. You know, with the camera because I hate to hear myself, but. And the nature of the business that we're in, you know, you're trying to share information with the general public. You're trying to share information with the people that follow you, with the people that support you. So you want them to see those things. And you kind of sure. have to put, not even your fears, but, you know, the things that you whatever, don't like to decide. Wh- whatever, whatever it may be. Whatever, whether it's your, 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 your fears, your self-consciousness, right. your uh, fear of how people will perceive you, judgment, family, whatever. Right. You got to go out there. You got to do what you got to do. Right. And believe it or not... Social media for the first three to four years was nothing more than me documenting my process and really no leads coming from there. Nothing. And now Instagram is about 50% of my new leads. Really? And they're very high close rate leads. Nice. And even if they don't follow me before they reach out, from when they first reach out to when, they, to when we're doing business, they're definitely following at that point. Nice. If they're not on social media like that, everyone's got YouTube. Yeah. Right? Every single, yeah, everybody, everybody does. My, your like, grandmother, right? If my grandmother was alive, she'd be watching Rest old. Soul. She'd be watching old, um, you know, old clips of old clips of music and t- whatever, whatever the thing was back right. then. There's always 
your grandma can get on YouTube and find you. Mm. you it's know? true. It's and true. Um, I think that if you can't put your head down and not look at the result for a certain number of years, social media is not for you because the days of going viral and blowing up and all that, it's over. Right. I know people that have 100,000 followers that sell no real estate. None whatsoever. And most of them have fake followers. Right. Just put that out there. We, we, we both yeah. know that. I delete followers that are not real. <laughs> I, I don't need a robot. I don't need it, right. Yeah, I don't need that. Right. You know, so my things grow slowly and Every now and then I'll say something that'll lose me a couple of followers and that's all right. The trash takes itself out. Listen, it's, it's, it's not even so much about you being blunt. It's just you, you being honest. Listen, I can't sleep at night if I'm going to sell my morals for a, for a paycheck. You and me both. You, you know, like I can't, like there's some things going on in the world right now where if I didn't open my mouth, maybe I wouldn't have lost a couple of clients. Right. But I think I already gained new clients that respect me for opening my so mouth. So it, it overtakes, like you said, it overtakes the nonsense. Listen, there's just certain things in life where if you don't speak up now, then you're never going to speak up. That's true. There's certain things. And depending on where you come from in the world and what your family background is and what's important to you, maybe it's not important to a random person. That's true. But there's thousands of kids that look up to me and say, if this guy didn't say anything, then how am I going to have the courage to say, say something that. in school? That's true. Or how am I going to have a courage to wear that T-shirt or that or, or, or that flag? That's true. Listen, we all have a right to self-determination. I agree. I agree. And, and 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 personal safety, and you know, it cost me a couple of a uh, couple of uh, deals this year. But you got to do what's right. You have to you do know? what's right. I, I agree. You know? I mean, I've had situations where I've, um, you know, with, with buyers that you're working with, you know, you talk them out of talk them out of a deal, you talk them out of buying a house and people look at you like you have 10 heads. Yeah. But for me, it's not so much about, like you said, it's not so much about chasing that check or yeah. about that particular deal. It's the relationship and maintaining relationships. I have people that I did business with 20 years ago that I still speak to up that's, till this day, the same, the same like you. Yeah. yeah so for so me, important. that's the most important thing. Everything else to me doesn't matter. So you're getting those second and third round referrals now. Yeah, you do. You know? Because you, it's, it's about when you don't have any business in the beginning, you're trying to sell to those people so that when they're ready to make that upgrade, that you're that first point of contact. You're right. that first person that they or think of. Or their neighbor, or their family, yes. or whoever. Right. But if you, I agree with you 100%, man. I spend more time talking my buyers out of buying a house than buying a house. Wow. You know, meaning like, we'll go look at three houses and I'll tell them straight up. You know how like some realtors will wait to see which ones they don't like? Right. Or like, so they could shove one down their throat? Right. I'm okay with saying all three houses that we they, saw today they were trash. Work, right. And I can actually go down to the basement and up in the attic and explain to you why. Why? You know? Right. And, and I think that that's such an important thing, especially if you're working buyers, is that if you're trying to hustle people or make a sale... But they can always get feel, that. Feel that. I mean, oh, you, you, yeah. you can, you can, can sense that. that. And when you're working at a desperate, <coughs> I can also sense that. For sure. So, you know, you start especially to Especially newer agents, when they start acting like right. thirsty. Right. You can feel that. You can feel that. 100%. So, you know, for, for you know, what you're saying, I mean... When it comes to them buying a property, you're talking about the most expensive purchase that you're ever going to make in life. 100%. So you want to make sure that the person that's actually helping you throughout that process really has your best interest at heart. 100%. Because now, three years later, five years later, that built-in value that they have is because you guided them to the right, yeah. to the right, you know, to the right uh, decision. Yeah. Um, I can safely say that even all through this pandemic, 2021, 20, 2022, that I have not sold anybody a house in my entire career that's not worth more money today. Nice. Nobody's upside down. Yeah, you, know? you and me both. You Nobody. know, I can't think of anybody that I put in a position where like they're gonna have to come out of pocket right. or anything like that. Right. You can't expect to make money on a house if you're gonna live in it in 12 months. That's that's just that's but impossible. General economics. I mean, you may economics. you may end up you may end up breaking even in a situation like that. Right. But you feel you you always think that anytime when you're buying a house, and I say this to people all the time. This is not the house that you're going to be in for the rest of your life. No. Maybe it may be, but if we're going based on stats, the average person stays in their house Six, they say five, years? five to seven five years. Five to seven years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My first house, I stayed in four and a half years. Yeah, yeah So I try, to, I try to tell people that all the time. And like you said, it's about, it's about the longevity. 100%. So, you know, it may not have everything that you're looking for, but it's, still, it's a start. Yeah. It's a starting point now. When you're looking to make that upgrade, it makes everything else easier sure. that you're looking to do. The bank forward. is more likely to lend money to you. You have a proven track record. Right. Once you pay off that trade line, forget about it. Right. Once you, if, if you decide to sell your house, sell your it's, house. it's a wrap it, it, at it that op point. It opens up so many doors, so 100%. many opportunities. Or you get an investment property, convert that to an investment property, get your own new house. The equity you build, um, it's, it's just, it opens up a lot of doors. And I think like the previous, like our parents' generation, my parents' generation, I should say, 
Um, not my family in particular. We moved a lot. You but, moved a lot, right. Uh, locally, but within the same area, but a lot. Right. But it was a very romantic idea of I'm going to die in this house. Right. Yeah. That's stupid. It's, true. it's a bad investment strategy. Right. I don't mind if you keep the house till you die. Till you die. Just don't die in this house. Yes. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, if, if, if take that investment. I have a friend, one of my really good friends, but they just, um, they just um, closed on their second home. Nice. And we went to college together. They ended up buying a house from their aunt the first time they bought a house. I advised them, even though I didn't get any money from it. Right. Uh, we were always, we were like super close friends. But so for you, once again, it wasn't about it wasn't about the right, check. You were right. trying to I help. Get, I could have gotten right salty thing. about that and just severed the relationship then. But right. but they actually are keeping that house now. And just it's a, just to give you an example of how real estate can build wealth, it was a small ranch in Copeg that they fixed up and moved into. They lived the last six seven years. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to rent it, be cash positive with a three percent interest rate. Nice. Obviously, you know, twelve thirteen hundred dollars a month right. positive cash flow. Nice. And they just bought a half acre in Comac on his big house with a pool and. Now you can live a good life. Nice. And you got at least you're you got a positive cash flow. And if they ever sell that house in Copac, forget about forget it. Forget about it. One hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars of profit in there. Nice. You know, nice. life changing move. That's a, working, that's a, yeah life for a, work, yeah. For, for a working, working person. Family, that's yeah. Saving five, ten, twenty thousand a year to stack one hundred fifty thousand tax free. That's fan, that's it's fantastic. Big money, man. That's fantastic. Big money. Um, what has been I guess some of the changes that you've seen when it comes to building from, I'd say five years ago. Besides price, obviously. Um, I think a lot of people still have this like uh, notion that they can buy a house and knock it down and build it new. And then once you pop that bubble for them and you give them the real numbers, I, I, w I want to try to answer your question specifically like things other than price. Right. But I think that um, price is always going to be the biggest factor. Right. Like per square foot costs have gone up tremendously. I won't touch a new construction build. If somebody calls me and asks me today, like how much is it to build this, like a house that you build? If I provide the land, right. I tell them about $300 a square foot. Oh, my God, that's a million dollars. I'm just like, yeah, well, if you went and bought that same new construction and it's bought some bullshit X. cookie cutter house from somebody, right. you're going to pay a million, five million, six for that same property. Of course, you're going to spend a little bit more building a custom house. A custom house. Make, yeah. Because you're doing it the way that you want. And it's going to be done right. I'm not but then also, it. sorry to cut you off. If we're looking in, let's say, argument's sake. The Hamptons. Right. We're talking almost a thousand a foot, right? Oh yeah, six seven hundred dollars a square foot starting. Right. You want to go build in Hudson Yards right now, thousand dollars a square foot all day. Twelve hundred, thirteen hundred. Wow. You know. Thirteen hundred a foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the right building. They're not touching it for less. Listen, it gets very costly at that point. Uh, but going back to your question, in addition to the costs uh, being tremendously different, I think in general our market is very unique because there's no land. Yeah. Right. We're not, we're not making any more land. Right. So that knockdown that you used to buy. For five hundred thousand to seven hundred now. Wow! Right, and there's more competition because there's more builders. Right, everyone's flipping, everyone's building. Right, so that's changed too. A lot more competition. That's true. Um, and the margins have gotten much tighter, and and that's how you know that you know the real estate market as a whole might be strong because there's a very little demand. Right, uh, I'm sorry, very little inventory, inventory. lots of demand. Right, and and rates are probably going to creep back down, but builders are getting squeezed right now. They're not going to tell you that, but they're getting squeezed because if you buy a house for more than you ever paid in the past. It costs more than ever to build a to house. To build a house. You know. Costs then, more for materials, costs more for labor. When there's a bunch of shysty characters building crappy houses with poor quality, right? Right. Then you're competing against the bottom of the barrel too. So it, it's a lot of external pressures that make it very tough. I used to build five or six a year. Now I'm comfortable building two, but pick two good deals. Two good ones. The good deals are hard to find, man. Wow. I just got one inside. I said I paid 550 for a knockdown, which is unheard of. Regular 60 by 110 lot. Right. I'm going to build a 3,000 square foot house. Nice. And uh, if I paid retail for that knockdown, it'd be 650. That's 100,000 of the gravy. Wow. Now it's not worth it. That's not worth it. Because if you're going to lay out over a million bucks and only make $100,000 and Does spend that a even year make of your sense? time, no, not yeah. at all. Not but at situations all. like that, because you did the flips, would you go back to, to doing the flips because it makes more sense now or you would just you would stay away from Listen, it? Listen, a good deal is a good deal. Yeah. You hit the nail right on the head. Regardless of the economic conditions, regardless of the, of the, of the market headwinds, he made a really good point that um, the, the deal is always out there. Right. I'm not going to compete with every Tom, Dick, and Harry investor. No, sure. If somebody calls and you don't me want up, to either. Yeah, and if somebody calls me up and says, I got this house, what do you think it's worth? I'm not trying to steal anybody's house. Right. I'll tell them, let me come look at your house. I can list it for this much if you're willing to do this, this, and this, right. or take a discount for it, right. or if you want me to buy cash today and walk away. This is what I can get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how we do it. Because I heard, I, I was listening to something that you said that <laughs> I think you went into a listing or 
a property they were thinking about selling and you told them what you would buy the property for in the condition that it's in. Right. But the then also, if right you now. listed the property for them, this is what you think you could get for yeah. it. Yeah. Which is very rare, I think, in this day and age because yeah. everybody's looking trying to, to lowball and they're trying yeah. to steal it. But then you lose them forever. Thank you. You lose it's, them forever. And, that, and that's what I you try to tell people You could have taken 2% and been happy. You could have bought it and flipped it and be happy. Now you lost and you got neither because you were greedy. You were greedy. You have to back it up with data. That's the bottom line. But I think we're out of time. And, and you uh, back it up. Yeah, I mean, the data, the data, like you said, is one of the most important things. Um, you can't steal somebody's house nowadays, bro. People are too smart. Yeah. And it, I, it doesn't even matter. I would never do it anyway. But even if... Well, even, but that goes back to the integrity that, that you, we talked about before. Because for you, I, the little bit that I do know about you, I know you're very big on integrity. And I'm, and I'm the same it, way. Man. Because for us, it's about our name. And like you said, when you screw that up, you're finished. 100%. Or Takes you do wrong or you move. do wrong by somebody, folks, you screw that up. 100%. So there's no, way, there's no way to ever get that back. Um, how can people get a hold of you if, they look, if, they're looking, um, if they're looking or want you to help them put a deal together, help them, you know, they want to buy a house from you, they want well, you to build something for them? Well, call Femi first, first and foremost. Thank you. Um, if you're interested in this sort of content, I have a YouTube vlog, uh, youtube.com slash Pinnacle Real Estate. I'm also Pinnacle Real Estate on Instagram, and uh, I'm very meticulous about putting out content on a regular basis, and I share all the stuff, not just the pretty stuff. Nice. You know, a couple rants and mixed in here and there, too. I mean, but that, 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 that's, part, that, of, that's part of what we do. I, yes, people sir. need to see the good, bad, 100%, and ugly. 100%. 100%, because it's not some TV, uh, I don't want to name any names, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we won't, yeah. We flipping won't you-know-who, <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, but thank you for the opportunity, man. No thank problem. you for thank having you. me. Thank you for pleasure. Uh, thank you for your time, bro. Um, we appreciate you. you. Man. Appreciate if you're looking to buy or sell, like... Like Shazad just said, uh, 917-337-3727, uh, Brooklyn, Queens, and Nassau. We're here to help. Um, and my son? 516-662-6824. Uh, Find me the realtor on Instagram. And like you said, Brooklyn, Nassau, Queens, even a little bit of the city. So whatever you're looking to do, we're here. And this is someone that I would definitely recommend as a builder. If you're, it, look, if you're looking to buy a property, if you're looking to get a house built, I just had something done that a house we bought maybe two years ago that we f had to fire the first contractor six months in for stealing thing. stuff. And oh boy. the second one didn't do a job that I was really, really pleased with. So you're someone that I would definitely recommend. And, appreciate uh, it, man. Thank people you. People definitely look to Shazad. He's, he's here to help and he's the real deal. So, Thank you. Appreciate uh, it. Thank guys, stay safe. Stay warm. Happy holidays. Have a great day.